Oh, sorry, the mic was muted. Uh, today's preparation for and actually doing the online course. And I am incredibly hesitant. In fact, um, there we go. I was in a bad mood this morning, <clears throat> and I considered um, blowing it off again. Well, not really again. I wasn't planning to do it before. My camera keeps auto-focusing, which is just awful. Anyway, there are a few things. Give me a second. There are a few things that we should keep in mind. The first is that I don't remember who exactly it was. It might have been YY Jacobson. But he said, the main thing you should do when you're giving a lecture or a speech of any kind, um, he gave one piece of advice. And I'm actually going to interrupt this giving of advice with one of my own professors. He, I think it was for a final project. We could either write an essay on um, a detective fiction piece or we could write our own detective fiction piece and he said you know among all the rules the most important one is when you're writing a story don't be boring okay that's one two is Rabbi Jacobson said Rabbi Y.Y. Jacobson because <laughs> his brother's also a rabbi and they have the same last name um, said it, it might have been Rabbi Orlovsky, actually. Either way, the rabbi said, make sure your speech is entertaining. Not interesting, entertaining. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can be entertaining about Ben Johnson. I don't know if I can make Ben Johnson entertaining. This is literature that was written four or five hundred years ago. But I've decided that I'm okay with that because it's the first lecture. Um, <clears throat> it's not my first lecture ever. As some of you know, there's an episode zero where I talk about um, Samuel Johnson I don't know if there's any relation, but they're separated by two or three hundred years. <clears throat> um, so that's the main thing, is that I want it to be entertaining, but I don't know if I actually have that skill developed yet. The other thing is, I'm going to compile a textbook and self-publish it under my corporation, because I actually own a corporation, which is very useful uh, for avoiding liability. For example, if you um, if you sell some sort of product <clears throat> and it turns out that it makes people sick or maybe it's dangerous and somebody's kid got injured by swallowing your toy and you didn't put a warning label on it. Um, and put like two pages in your manual about how you shouldn't swallow it and how people under three shouldn't be playing with the toy because they tend to put things in their mouth. If you, uh, I think it's called sole proprietorship, but basically if you didn't start a business and you were just selling it as an individual, if that family whose child got injured sues you, they can take your house, your investments, your car, right, your possessions. Um, and so that's the, the issue with sole proprietorship. But if you have a corporation, it stops at your corporation. They can sue your corporation into the ground 
but they can't touch any of your personal assets. That's one of the primary protections that starting a corporation grants you. Um, <clears throat> so, and I renewed my corporation's details last year. I moved my office from my university apartment, which I don't live in anymore, to uh, my grandmother's place, which I also don't live in anymore. Go figure, I might have to update again. But I'm going to publish the textbook under that. And the joy of this is that um, my course will have a textbook that was compiled by me, but not written by me. And what this practically means is that I will not be putting anything that is not in the public domain in there. Um, so when I wrote, that's the, the second thing. So the first thing is, be interesting. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I might redo episode one at the end, just so that it's uh, when I get better at making videos, um, they'll, they won't see my worst video first kind of thing. Um, so be entertaining, not just interesting, entertaining. Two is I'm going to make a textbook and publish it under my publishing company. Well, it's just a general company, my arts company. Three, I forgot because I was listing the first two. <sighs> that sucks. Um, but there you have it. Oh, so the Samuel Johnson video, and I can pull it up actually. Uh, let me just... Oh, and I actually know what number four will be. Do, do, do. There you go. I'm looking at a video here, but what I want to do is look at um, my videos, or my channel. So my Samuel Johnson Welcome video. Welcome to the long away. Quiet you. Um, is here somewhere. You can see I streamed a few times. There. 10 views. My Samuel Johnson video. <clears throat> Let's see what that thumbnail says. He who has little knowledge of human nature as to seek happiness by changing anything but his own disposition will waste his life in fruitless efforts. That's pretty interesting. Basically, the only thing you can really change is yourself. And if you're trying to change human nature or other people, you're wasting your efforts, you're wasting your time. In that video, I took the time to read in its entirety every single piece that I was going to talk about. And I don't mind that, but um, if you saw, that video is an hour and 20 minutes, and I actually cut out like half an hour of um, other pieces that I read and then even sections of pieces that I kept in and so now we know why <clears throat> um, why in university they don't read the th pieces in class is because it, it takes an absurdly long amount of time sound like it's really harsh on my my uh, face there um, and I think what I'll do is I'll have two versions. I'll have the long version where I read everything, and I'll have the short version where I either read sections or I cut out certain pieces. And then if I get really clever, I can hide the long version behind a paywall. <laughs> Like, make it a Patreon video or something. Although, I don't like Patreon because they're suspicious. I don't know if you knew about the whole uh, Patreon uh, scandals there a couple of years ago. Where they were, sh I think, shutting down people's accounts because they didn't agree with them politically. Meanwhile, it says, I think in their terms of service, that um, we aren't looking at your videos and judging them for correctness, political correctness. 
Meanwhile, they were. So, um, politically, Patreon is a little bit too PC for me, so I don't know if I'd use Patreon per se, but you get the point. Some sort of paywall. Maybe just a, um, a, uh, if you turn up your volume, you can hear the bell. Maybe just a PayPal that redirects you to a download page or something. Anyway, that's number three. The fact that I read it during. And what would be nice is if I have a textbook, then, and I'll probably sell it for like two bucks, you know, then, um, I can put maybe a couple extra pieces, short pieces, poems or whatever from an author I cover for the more studious or interested person or just somebody who buys the textbook because I'm not going to sell it like call it the textbook for this YouTube course. I'll put it up on Amazon as, you know, an anthology of um, canonical or classical literature or literary classics, you know, as compiled and edited by Daniel Triumph. Um, and, oh, just a side note, since I want to make a textbook, and a lot of modernist pieces are too recent to be in the public domain, that means I can't publish them without getting permission, and I don't want to get permission, and it's difficult to get permission sometimes. So, um, this course probably won't go into the modernists beyond maybe a mention unless I can find modernist authors who whose work is in the public domain. And the thing about it is a lot of a lot of the great modernists are um, American and American copyright law is even more strict like it lasts longer than um than uh, anywhere else in the world, I think. And then, for example, William Faulkner, who I would have liked to have talked about, um, his his work is kept alive, or the copyright's kept alive by his, like, estate, similar to Tolkien, uh, who, I think Tolkien's work is entering the public domain in, like, ten years. So Lord of the Rings will be free range. Anyway, let's move on to point four, which I also forgot. I should write these down. So, be entertaining. Publish a textbook. Um, have two versions, the short version and the full version with all the reading. Four, I don't remember. Um, and since I don't remember, hopefully it wasn't that important. This will be released as like part two of the previous vlog. I'm not going to start a new, like I'm not going to give it its own number since it's about similar things, just a little more focused. Um, expect the course to be 12 lessons and each lesson will probably be two parts, an hour to an hour and a half each. So if you're on Instagram, that might mean three or four parts. Um, I don't know if I'll upload it on Instagram, or if I do, it'll be in its own, <laughs> on a different account or something. And actually, yeah, I'm going to start a different account for these courses, but I'll try to upload it on both. So thanks for watching. I know I'm not on phone, so I can make the video longer, but 15 minutes is a good benchmark anyway. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time when I do Benjamin Johnson, the great Renaissance poet and playwright. We'll open with uh, Cookham, not Cookham, uh, Penshurst. Great poem. I love the poem. I wrote a poem based on the poem. <laughs>